Hello. On behalf of Shelley McNamara and myself, I would like to thank the organizers of To Spring with Oris for inviting us to speak as part of the festival. I begin with an image that on the left hand side is ground. It's limestone in an area called the Burren in West Clare in, in Ireland. And it's a kind of lunar landscape where the bare limestone has been eroded by water, uh, by H2O over time. And the combination between the limestone and water, um, an acid is formed carving in to the limestone. And what the reason for presenting it uh, on, on this talk is really that it also is about time and materials and the relationship to the earth. And it also reminds us of a kind of a city landscape where streets are carved and landscape finds a footing in the crevices. And on the right hand side is a beautiful image of the, um, so it's, a, it's an image of the beautiful project uh, by in the, in the Giardini in Venice by the Norwegian architect Sverfen. It was won by competition by him in 1958 and opened in, the, in 62 but beautiful thin concrete beams capture light and hold the sky and integrate existing landscape into the architecture. So we want to describe architecture as ha happening between ground on the left-hand side and sky on the right-hand side, that gravity anchors us and that sky animates our lives. There's a nice quotation from the Dutch architect Gerhard Rietveld, where he says, um, uh, a, a beautiful, where he describes a beautiful way of describing architecture, and I quote, to partition off a segment of unbounded space and bring it into human scale in order to be able to experience that space as reality. I heard the philosopher Richard M. Carney speak recently, and he was describing contemporary society about the primacy of touch oversight. And he said, and I quote, the interlet internet has left our bodies behind. Technology conquers distance, but not closeness. And he talks about touch as our most vital sense, about the body keeping the score, as he calls it, that memory is lodged in our bodies, that we are touch hungry. So in this talk, I'd like to talk about architecture as built skin, that place, culture, and the power of materials combine to make architecture Materials become our outer skin. Space and materials enclose each of us, and that's why architecture is important. I'll talk about uh, five projects. Uh, two we've uh, done in, in the kind of more distant past and three uh, recent ones. And I'd like to, if you like, begin by describing that we set up our practice, Grafton Architects, in 1978. And we were building in Ireland schools and universities and um, uh, housing and many other kinds of projects from that time on. And in 2002, we did a competition for our project in, uh, in Milan for Bocconi University. And this became, we won the competition and this became our first project outside Ireland. And these drawings, I'd like to just de describe the, 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 the drawing here on the, the upper right hand side. It was for uh, uh, a thousand offices, uh, for a large uh, Aula Magna hall for a thousand people and a number of other uh, spaces as well. So this, this sketch is really the DNA of the project. We uh, place the thousand offices like a, a, a courtyard grid hoisted and held in the sky. So going from the sky to the ground, these uh, courtyards of, of, of uh, offices 
formed these um, these places where the the sunlight could come to the to the to the lower levels, and each of the offices for the professors and administrative staff would have windows that open directly to the outside. And this is really important in our COVID time where it's been discovered worldwide that natural air and ventilation are really critical in terms of our well-being. The plan on the left-hand side is describing the stone floor of the city flowing into the campus of Bocconi. We position the Aula Magna on the junction between the busiest road, a quieter road. And this paper model here is really the beginnings of the studies of carving into the ground, making our, uh, if you like, anchoring our building in the, uh, in the city of Milan. And this one to 500 card model is describing the uh, repeated structure every 25 meters with diaphragm walls, uh, holding the bars of offices, allowing light from the sky down below. And here is a section through the, that uh, hall, the Aula Magna, with a 66 meter, sorry, 22 meter uh, cantilever, which projects over this space, which is five meters below the city. This is the city level. And here are the uh, offices held. Uh, these are the structures that hang the offices and making these courtyards. And you see this, um, uh, image describing the uh, natural light which comes in in these periscopes, these natural uh, light uh, filtering its way into the large room. And this, we love this image here, which is the lower level, which is the five meter below street level, lined with a beautiful stone, Bianca Laza, a white marble, and light bounces down to these lower levels. And for us, what is really important about this space is one that you have the feeling of the of gravity. You have the, the sense of a, of this aula uh, hovering above you. So you've got this sense of being held by the by the chepo, which is a, a, a geological um, concrete a stone like concrete, which we have used in, in this building. But also socially, what happens is that you have the, the people, the professors and the students of uh, Bicconi participating in their own work, but also the citizens of Milan being able to view in through this eight meter high clear glass window. So it's a connection between the university and the city and the city and, and university. And I'd like to share with you today this beautiful screen, which was in our minds in, in a number of projects when we were doing the Department of, uh, of uh, Finance um, uh, here in Dublin. Uh, we, we made this thick wall uh, overlooking a Huguenot cemetery in the middle of the city. And when we were doing Bacconi, we were looking at a, a, a modified uh, wall uh, for the, the, the library component in the competition. And we were referring to this beautiful screen designed in 1925, this block screen made of uh, lacquered uh, timber and steel pins designed by the uh, Irish architect uh, Eileen Gray, whose work we really admire. But it was really important to, to point out that uh, architectural um, life is enriched by the work of architects from, from other times. So we were using this uh, um, uh, image to describe an elevation where there, there was more solid and that the windows were really the gaps between. So this is the, the library component in the Bocconi project, which was really a, a, like a, a screen between city and the university. And this pencil drawing is describing that particular part of the university, which is kind of a standalone um, a piece of, uh, of space held over the streets of the city. Another competition we did in, uh, in Lima, Peru, uh, which was um, a really exciting project for us to, to participate uh, in. And we won this competition. And what's amazing about uh, Lima is that it's a desert city. It's 12 degrees down from the equator. It's a, um, it should be really very hot as a result of, of that. But because of um, the von Humboldt current, which comes up from Antarctica, it's kept in the 20 degrees Celsius. And for us, making a un new university on a small site, uh, we're also, you know, delved into uh, pieces of architecture that, that have inspired us over the years. Looking at the wonderful work of many uh, South American architects, uh, this, this image on the top left is a stadium in Dorado by uh, Mendes de Rocha. And what was really exciting for us was to look at work where major structure holds people's lives. It's obviously looking at the soccer uh, kind of off screen. But what interests us, I suppose, was the, the, uh, 
the fantastic scale of structure and the socializing possibility when air and temperature are really benign. So we took this um, amazing site, which is uh, beside these 40 uh, meter high cliffs between the city of Lima and the, uh, the Pacific Ocean. Uh, these diagrams are describing us uh, thinking about the 40 meter uh, high cliffs, the sea, the ocean, the valley in which the site is at 360 meter long and the uh, very busy motorway on one side of the site and the, the gentle uh, um, residential zone to the right hand side. So this is our uh, sketch describing what we we ask the questions if we're living in a in a city where the temperature is really very benign if we're making a new uh, campus can it be a vertical campus can we make a man-made cliff can we have a certain or a huge amount of this uh, building uh, outside because of the benign temperature. So within this section, what we're really saying is that the, the larger laboratories are placed on the lower levels. The roofs of the, uh, the rooms below can become these intimate gardens for the students to uh, enjoy as, as part of their teaching. And for us, what was amazing was that this building uh, has become a, a reality. We have the busy motorway on the left-hand side, the seismic isolators here, which hold this building. Uh, Peru and, and Lima is in a, in, a, in a seismic area. So they're sitting on these seismic isolators. They're 1.5 meter diameter springs on which the building sits. And above is the vertical campus. So all the rooms um, uh, that are internal, our uh, laboratories and some teaching rooms, and all the circulation is external. So if you're a student moving about here, you can uh, talk to your colleagues, meet professors, but also you can see into the various other uh, disciplines that you may be not studying but could be curious about. And the building acts as a type of carved mountain, protecting students from the sun. And what was amazing for us was that up on the right-hand side, uh, you're, you're really seeing the 900 workmen that uh, that made this uh, uh, this building, and for us, I suppose the amazing thing about uh, architecture is the collaboration right through from uh, from idea with client to to the making, and all these anonymous people who work together with architects to make buildings. Uh, it, we probably don't give them enough credit. We we worked with local architects, uh, shell architects. Uh, and, and our clients, for, for them, it was really that this was um, the first university within this uh, technical, um, uh, these technical studies on a busy motorway uh, in the city of Lima. And I'd like to share with you this beautiful drawing um, by um, Alexander von Humboldt, who went to uh, South America at the beginning of the 1800s. And we use the term as a result uh, if you like, the physics of culture, because architecture, um, we would argue, really does need to respond to its, uh, its location, its place, its part of uh, a continuation. But what's really beautiful about this drawing that we have on screen, it's called Naturgemelde, which is, a, is really um, a, a drawing that synthesizes on the left hand side and on the right hand side, are all these lists of data of of uh, air pressure, of, of height, uh, of um, natural species. And what was amazing about von Humboldt is that this was the first time that all of this data was synthesized into this kind of a drawing. And, and you could describe him really as um, simplifying scientific information, depicting it in a beautiful uh, visual. And this drawing and this idea has really shaped, uh, I suppose, uh, uh, future ways of of viewing the natural world. And it showed for the first time that nature was a global force corresponding to, um, to climate zones right across the, the world. And these two images, when we were, um, uh, when we were part of the Venice Biennale in 2012, uh, under the, the directorship of uh, David Chipperfield, Common Ground was his theme. We used these two images. And when we were hanging them up, the workmen said, why are you hanging up two images of the same thing? And for us, this was an extraordinary response because on the left-hand side, this one here, this is of Skellig Michel, which is uh, uh, on its hermitage uh, on, island, on an island off the coast of Ireland. 
And what uh, this was from about the 8th to the 12th century. And you get this incredible kind of uh, staircases and these intimate uh, hermits' uh, cells and tiny gardens in this place. And on the right hand side is the 15th century uh, Inca um, uh, Machu Picchu. And what's extraordinary about uh, Machu Picchu is its clinging to the Andes. Uh, in in Skedek Michel, you're clinging to a rock in the Atlantic Ocean. And here they're clinging to the Andes and making these intimate gardens uh, with, their, with, their, uh, with their dwellings and their uh, public buildings. And for us, when we were making the, the university in uh, Lima, we wanted to have these little gardens on the roof so that they, the cultural heritage of students uh, in Lima, that they would, uh, if you like, have... Uh, 21st century interpretations uh, of their of their own history. This uh, these the next three projects which I'll show you are uh, recent projects. They were only finished uh, quite a short time ago. It's a place called Sacle, and this was a competition that we did. It was an agricultural plateau, and when we went there at the beginning of the competition, very little was built on it. It was agricultural fields, and what we did was we brought home this little stone, this yellow ochre stone, to remind us of the place and, uh, if you like, the past of this, this site. And we wanted to look at um, the scale of this. This project was for hundreds of research offices for a huge number of facilities for students, and we wanted to look at uh, scale. So we went to the familiar. This is the uh, Palais Royal in, in Paris. This is a beautiful building in Milan called Ospitalia Maggiore, built in the 1400s and by um, uh, Francesco Sforza. And what's amazing about this built as a hospital with its uh, um, nine courtyards, a large courtyard and four and four, very simple colonnades with uh, outdoor staircases. It's still in use, it's now a university. And what's amazing is that something from the 1400s is still performing well in terms of sustainability. Here, under normal circumstances, this is where we'd walk through every day into work through uh, the front square in Trinity College. And this is the size of the site of the building in Sacle, in Sacle, 200 meters by 100 meters. And this is our plan for the competition. Part of the requirement of the competition was that 100 trees would form part of the design uh, of whatever scheme would win. And what we thought is that that we thought about the building as a monastery for learning. It was capable of existing on its own before other things were built on the plateau, but also being able to participate like a city block um, as, uh, as, the, as the campus extended. So we have the, uh, in terms of the, the plan, we have the uh, model for the competition, um, the, the large um, courtyard with trees, a number of other uh, 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 courtyards within, within the building. So here we have uh, the plan of the ground floor where you enter from the north in through into this courtyard. And when you pass the cafe, you see into the uh, main auditorium and also under the structure, you see the space for a hundred trees with its uh, garden. You enter into the main uh, concourse, a type of uh, internal uh, courtyard and the, the other courtyards, all of which pinwheel around uh, the outdoor spaces. And for us, what's really important is that they, um, especially in COVID time, the, the issue of natural ventilation, but it's something that we really, really push uh, even, even before this unusual time in, 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 in global history, so that you get natural ventilation through narrow plans, but also you have a view out to the context and into the context here. Each of the uh, offices has a window and a view out. For us, what we use, what we call this is uh, our vertical uh, contours looking out to the surrounding uh, countryside. And in section, this is taking uh, the, the section through the, the place where the, the trees, the, the hundred trees will be or are in 
uh, natural ground. You have this narrow section, so you either view into the courtyard or outside. You have this uh, central space, you enter and you move vertically, and a ramp brings you to the library, which acts like a bridge between these two uh, spaces. So you have the space of the outside and the space of the inside. And this image then is the, the reality of the, of, the, uh, of the building. You're in the main space here, rising up, but there you see the ramp bringing you from here to the library in the distance. So you're on this ramp moving uh, uh, to that pivotal point between uh, inside and the, um, and the landscape outside. Here we have an image bringing you in from the north into the first space past the cafe, viewing through into the landscape, which obviously over time the trees will mature. And as you arrive up to the entrance, you're being surrounded and uh, you can glimpse into the school university uh, itself. This is a project which we finished uh, recently in uh, Kingston, uh, which is uh, south of London in, in the United Kingdom. And what is really interesting for this uh, project for us is that its relationship to uh, Kingston as a, as, a, as a town, as a part of London. It's been really, really modified by, uh, by, the, by roads. Roads have cut through this place uh, to solve the road engineers' uh, issues, but then we would argue being detrimental to the kind of tissue of, of urban life. And what we have done to make this townhouse, uh, it's for uh, a library and dance for two completely different uh, uh, requirements. And what we did was to use these uh, wraparound uh, colonnade that would connect both to the, uh, to the local in terms of the ground, but also bring people uh, out to the edges uh, of this building. It's a type of warehouse of ideas. So the colonnade, which wraps around on the outside, also acts not just as a place where students can go to the outside. And, and again, it's just interesting in terms of the pressure that, that COVID has uh, put on all of us, that being outside in fresh air is not only a good thing for yourself, but also uh, a, an important thing in terms of well-being. The plan describes the colonnade wrapping around uh, to the to the uh, to the uh, south and, and west. It means that you have a way of escaping as well, but also in a nice way. And the section, what's really important for us is that you come in through and that the staircase that brings you up to the highest level from which you can see out to Hampton Court, one of the palaces, which is across the Thames River, that you get this sense of where you are. And one of the things uh, like in, uh, in UTEC or in this one here or in other projects, that for us, one of the roles of architecture is that not only are you contained within architecture, but that you know where you are, that you become more aware that you are in Kingston or that you're in Lima or that you're in other uh, places. That architecture's role is really to heighten your sense of where you are. And for us, what was really important in this project was that it, uh, through discussion with the client, the, uh, the main auditorium, rather than being a black box, was modified to become uh, like a forum, like a place where, when not in use, it was uh, a specific use, it was um, uh, available for the students and for the, uh, for the rest of the campus, uh, but also had, uh, had the ability to be self-contained. What is really, uh, I suppose a very important uh, uh, dialogue in this project was one was for a library and the other was for urban dance. Urban dance is unbelievably noisy. Uh, libraries are traditionally quiet. What is really uh, wonderful architecturally is when you have this kind of duality of, of strangers dancing, that, that I, how does the architecture respond? And for us, what was really uh, a, a really important uh, aspect of this was how do you control uh, acoustics, how do you control movement, but how do you make overlap and how do you make synthesis? So this drawing is really describing uh, entry, you move up the great staircase, there's a cafe here, there are places for dance, places for the auditorium and back, uh, back of house. But as you move up this kind of 
uh, weave of, of, uh, of spaces. There is this interconnection. And what is amazing, I was there uh, in, uh, in spring light and the light is coming through from this surface on the, the south, right through in section to a, a wall on the, uh, on, the, on the north side. And this depth of penetration of light uh, is also about how sound is controlled uh, within, within the building. So here we have the, the auditorium. You've come from the, uh, this place here where you have arrived in, the street is just off the photo. You arrive into here, when it's open to the, uh, for everyone's use, it links to the foyer. We have the library, we have project spaces, we have dance spaces. So it can be both itself, it can be connected, but also you are aware um, of other students with it within the university. So this kind of overlap of um, moments of dance and students uh, waiting, we found this really very beautiful that, that this, uh, this possibility existed so that there was, uh, the spaces would have multi-use that you'd have, they're the south windows bringing, uh, bringing daylight into the space. So for us, what's really important is the, this duality of use, this, uh, this overlap, and that spaces do not need to be totally separated, do not need to be the black box. And this is the, the busy road with a bus stop just outside the, the cafe before the colonnade. And for us, what's really important is that the university, there were fantastic clients as well, that they wanted that the general public would feel that the university, this townhouse was, uh, um, uh, if you like, a facility for them. So if you're waiting for a bus that you can uh, have something in here and perhaps go up the staircase into the library and there's another cafe on the upper level where you could view out to see Hampton Court uh, in the distance. And the last project I'll go through today, we just finished in the absolutely fantastic city of Toulouse in, in France. This is the great Garonne River you're seeing here with these beautiful bridges, this fantastic uh, uh, brick um, surface to the, uh, to the river, a series of these wonderful churches and spires. And this is the, the Canal de Bindi coming into the city and flowing into the, uh, into the Garonne. This is our project here set into this wonderful uh, uh, city uh, of Toulouse. And the, the, this was a competition and it, just to lose itself is just such a fabulous place. This is the center of the of the of the city. It's originally it was a Celtic city, then it was Roman and many layers layers of history. And the competition site was at a breach in the wall. This is a medieval wall, a five meter high brick wall with a gap in the wall. And here is the Canal de Midi as it arrives into the into the Garonne. The project was to be positioned in this breach in the wall. So our, it's a research um, uh, university building. And for us, what was really important, again, that issue of natural ventilation for the offices, um, uh, heightening people's awareness of where they are. We positioned the, uh, the, uh, the lecture rooms and the, the cafes, a kind of nuggets with gaps, framing the views out to the city, out to uh, the surrounding uh, views, positioning these and cranking cranking the, uh, the offices and protecting each one, depending on its orientation. We pleated the outer uh, brick wall. So you have the heart of people arrive from, uh, from the city into the center. We make this heart, which is the, uh, the if you like, the vertical um, uh, courtyard that holds the community of scholars together. And when we began the competition, this is this beautiful map showing the Garonne. This, it looks like a broken heart, this beautiful, beautiful map of the city. Our site is just at this junction here. And what's really beautiful about that city of Toulouse is its uh, wonderful brick buildings with buttresses and the, the uh, courtyard, the courtyard buildings, which have this really beautiful uh, picture of the sky, this framing of the of the vertical and here is our collage from the competition a, a romanesque church the canal de midi the uh, medieval brick wall the the brick wall stopping and starting again on the other side so we took um, uh, elements the kind of cultural elements of of toulouse 
to, to make a, if you like, a collage of culture, but also to solve and, and invent a new uh, um, a school of economics. The, the main issue that, that I began with about, you know, architecture as built skin, the materiality, we found close by uh, to Toulouse, a factory that makes bricks in the same way as the Romans make. And their proportion and the materiality and their uh, and the mortar that we really found this kind of texture was still in existence that we used uh, used in the project and in terms of the section we have the series of uh, plans where it's embedded in the ground on the lower level it moves up through the various uh, um, uh, floors but you see the the, uh, these rooms, which are acting like boulders, through which you have a view out to the to the context, making you aware that you are in Toulouse, not in any other city, but in Toulouse, and that the central heart of the building here becomes the place where colleagues overlap and meet one another. This this piece here, which we call the sky cloister, um, connects uh, uh, at, um, uh, at a number of levels but also frames the entrance. You see in section, you have the sky cloister, which uh, as you come in the threshold of the building holds you and that the space here, which holds the community of scholars together is held by this uh, um, sky cloister as you move through. So you're, you're carved into the ground and you move up towards, towards the sky. And here we have an image of the, the medieval wall, the cut in the wall. And we came as close as we could to that wall. This is the uh, the original wall. Here uh, is the uh, the building that that we have inserted into part of Toulouse with the bricks, the same proportion, the same uh, uh, the same mortar, and that we took the the various colonnades and wove them through our new building. We made the buttresses, if you like, translated into the 21st century. The fire stairs become these brick uh, buttresses that hold the outer crust of, of the building. And we pleated the walls. Each of the offices for the professors and researchers um, have windows to the outside, which they can open. That they, we pleated the wall to protect them from the, uh, the, the protect the, offices and the glass from the, from the sun, but also to give a sense of solidity. So here are these little, there's a wonderful word, words that they use, which are these um, um, cocktail, um, uh, cocktail galleries. So between um, lessons and between lectures that there are these places where they can view and enjoy the relationship to the city of Toulouse. So this is our sky cloister, the Canal de Midi, the wall, the arriving in, this is the connection. All of the, 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 uh, the building is held by the, the, the fire stairs become types of buttresses that enclose this building. And then you have the various pleated walls of the offices and the interior. And we love this image here with two students um, having a conversation in the balcony that's just in there. And there uh, also the building is being framed, is framing the city. So you see beyond it to the context of, of Toulouse and you see the, uh, the sky cloister uh, framing the entrance and uh, framing the sky. In terms of the image, then you have the sky cloister at night, the colonnades which uh, wrap around the building, uh, uh, if you like describing movement. When you arrive to the building, you rise up slightly to the center. This obviously the building is, these are the, uh, the uh, security lines we're trying to, uh, in, if you like design them so that they become both welcoming and doing their job when the building is closed. So in here is the heart of the building and the framed sky uh, up above. And I'll end on this image where you have students within the, uh, the space uh, of the building, the brick, um, the medieval brick as part of the materiality of this building, the arrival below the little coffee uh, area, uh, a gallery, you can see the Canal de Midi, you can see the Garonne, you can see uh, beautiful buildings in the distance. So that architecture, in terms of built skin, holds you. Hell is uh, highlights your relationship to uh, where you are, uh, does its job, but also, um, if you like, takes something from the past and translates it uh, into, into contemporary life. So we'd like to thank you 
uh, for inviting us and to wish you all the very best from Dublin, from all at Grafton Architects. Thank you. Thank you.